My border collie is crazy and he's driving me crazy. <sighs> Ever felt like that? Ever been just a little bit frustrated with your dog's behavior? Maybe even enough that you want to shout or scream or God forbid, retaliate? Okay, let's take a deep breath. It's gonna be okay. We're going to work through this together. Because you know, sometimes my dog drives me nuts too. You can do this. I'm going to give you some crucial survival tips for coping with your crazy border collie. So watch right through to the end because I'm saving the best for last. The truth is, the way we react to our dogs when they've done something we don't like can either help to keep building a bond with the dog or it can contribute to lack of trust or just general stress. So when your dog is being crazy enough to drive you crazy, here are some do's and don'ts. Do put the dog away in a crate, in another room, maybe in the car. This is as much for the dog as it is for you because if you're really angry at the dog, you need to cool down and chill out. Sometimes dogs act out because of stress, excitement, overstimulation, or any number of things that might be going on. Time in a crate or in a safe space in another room can often settle an overstimulated or overtired dog. But most importantly, it gives you time to cool down. Do take a deep breath. Take a minute to meditate. Give yourself a hug. <laughs> like seriously, give yourself a hug. You deserve it. Staying calm can be so challenging when your dog's behavior isn't improving as quickly as you would wish. Don't. Create a story or assume your dog is doing something on purpose. Don't assume that the dog knows what you want and expect from him. Don't assume that he's trying to be dominant or disrespect you or that he hates you. These are all human concepts and yet many people make false assumptions that dogs have an intent to gain power over you or that they're mad at you etc etc <laughs> for example i once heard an owner say that her dog peed in the house because the dog was mad at her dogs are sentient beings and they experience emotions but they experience life very differently than we do maybe her dog was stressed from being on its own or maybe the dog just really had to pee we don't just do this to dogs we often make assumptions about why people do certain things or act in certain ways too and often we're just totally wrong. In the end, we can never know exactly how the dog felt. You can be fairly certain that the dog was reacting in a way that seemed very appropriate to the dog, or they just wouldn't act that way. And it isn't personal to you, even if it feels like it is. Trust me, it is not. Don't beat yourself up. We all make mistakes with dog training, even the people who pretend they never do. <laughs> Move forward. Every dog is different and some are more challenging to train than others or require a different approach. Learn, let go, and move on. I absolutely adore my dog Skeen and yet training recall with him has been challenging to me. It's not because he's purposely rebelling against me or disrespecting me even though it's easy to go to those places but he has a very high chase drive and he's often very worried about sounds. He was also restricted as a pup because of knee surgery and got into a pattern of frustration about being leashed. So I have to put much more effort into building a relationship that he values. I have to give him mentally stimulating games and exercises to keep his focus. I also need to boost his confidence and I need to prevent him from repeating the behaviors that I don't want. I have to find a balance that works for both me and for skiing. And sometimes I have to be creative with my approach to training. Don't. Focus on what you can't do or what you didn't do. The things that you can't prevent, you can't prevent. The things that happened in the past are in the past. Do. Focus on what you can do. What can you do to improve your approach to training? What small successes have you made? Those small successes can turn into big things, so they are not insignificant. Celebrate them. Do. Seek solutions. Take notes. Make observations. Keep a progress journal. Or take videos to track improvements. Be clear about the specific problems you are having with your dog. And specifically create a vision for what outcome you are working towards. So with skiing, being sound sensitive and a worrier, 
I envision a dog who isn't bothered by new sounds and who's confident and easygoing. Don't. Expect your dog to change overnight. Small steps forward can lead to great destinations. We don't all take the same route, and some paths are longer and more adventurous than others. Don't judge yourself harshly. I can sometimes hear in my head the voices of other people judging me. You call yourself a trainer? My dog never did that. My dog was house trained and learned a thousand tricks by the time he was eight weeks of age. My dog has perfect recall and I don't even have to call him, he just reads my mind. Do. Remember that it's not a competition. I can't even compare my own dogs to each other because they're just completely different dogs. So I'm honestly happy that some people have never had to experience some of the challenges that my dogs have had and that they've owned such amazing dogs. However, a lot of dogs are perfectly imperfect. And the great thing is you'll become a much better trainer when you work with an imperfect dog. And here's a secret for you. Some dog owners think they're exceptional trainers when the truth is they have exceptional dogs. Shh. Do invest in your relationship with your dog. Now listen carefully because this is one idea that has been a total game changer for me in my approach to scheme. When I was younger, my dad taught me about compound interest. So if you put a little bit of money into an account that makes interest, even just putting in a little bit every day it may not seem like much at first, but because you're making interest on the money you put in and also on the interest you earn, over time the amount can really grow. With debt it works the same, except that you pay interest on the interest you owe. In dog training, your bond with your dog, or what you might call your relationship bank account, can work the same way. So what if you put just a little contribution into your dog's relationship bank account, some small contribution that builds your relationship in a positive way every day, and you tried not to take too much out? This isn't about giving your dog exactly what he wants. Skeen sometimes wants to chase squirrels or bark at the neighbor's cows, but it's about finding ways to make your relationship valuable. One example is doing mark and treat games so that you have a marker word that has value to your dog. I'll link a video about this at the end of this video. Another is to look at what your dog loves to do with you. Skeen loves to tug with big sticks and we sometimes play games with a type of flirt pole. Skeen likes doing tricks yeah. and running on the treadmill. And he also loves walking in quiet places away from where I live. When I walk with him, there's just one rule. He has to look at me before we move forward gently. Then he can sniff or walk for a while. So he learns to connect and check in with me and he's rewarded by sniffing or sometimes going in a direction that he wants to go. It's an excellent relationship building exercise. Even if I have an episode with Skeen where I feel that I have withdrawn from the relationship, which does sometimes happen, I try to end our day on a positive note. After being sure he's well rested and calm, I'll give him an easy game or trick that I know he can do successfully. Remember to praise your dog. Nice. They do Good really job. value our praise more than we sometimes realize. Work, and dogs do not hold grudges, not like we do. Also, look at your approach to training. Are you having fun? Is your dog having fun? One thing I've done is to make a playlist of fun songs on my phone for when I do games or exercises with my dogs. Music keeps me in a better frame of mind because training really should be fun. It's an easy question to ask yourself at the end of each day. Did I contribute to my relationship bank account today? And if not, how can I change that for the next day? For some ideas on things that you can do to help build a strong relationship with your dog, check here. And for an introduction to Mark and Treat, check out this other video up here. See you there.